Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have uh, Phyllis Hill Slater, President and CEO of Hill Slater Inc. Phyllis? Good, good. Thank you very much. My name is Phyllis Hill Slater, and I've been in business since 1969. So I've seen taxes put on small businesses like you wouldn't believe. It's always they disguise it sometimes. Sometimes it's called a fee, a surcharge, a this or that, but a tax is a tax. And MTA had no right to give small businesses here on Long Island this tax because when we as small business owners can't meet our budget, we tighten our belts. We take care of things internally. We don't pass it on to everyone else because we can't run our business. MTA needs a complete overhaul. They need to be able to run their business within their budgets and not on the backs of taxpayers who already pay too many taxes. No more mandates and mandates being this tax. We need incentives. Give us incentives to, to, to grow our businesses and we will do just what we do best. We will grow our businesses and we will create jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. That was very good. Next, we have Gina Hill Slater Parker, President and CEO of the New York State Black Women's Enterprises. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Gina Hill Slater Parker, and our organization is seeing a surge of aspiring entrepreneurs who are looking to start, grow, and develop their businesses. Our existing small business owners are all looking to grow, develop, expand their businesses. In order for us to yield healthy business growth and development, we must have less taxation. We must have less uh, oversight, less um, uh, mandates. All those things work against small business. Uh, we need the efforts of Senator Campanin to continue to do all his good work, take away these taxes, take away these mandates, and allow small businesses to grow, develop, prosper, hire new people, and bring New York State back to where it needs to be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is uh, Jim Calabrese of Calabrese Brothers Construction Company. Come on down, Jim. My name is Jim Calabrese. I'm a small business owner in uh, Nassau County. I'm here uh, with Senator Campanin because of the MTA payroll tax and what it has done to our businesses. We are having a hard time expanding. As you know, we're in a recession. Uh, there's businesses closed up and down the turnpike and everywhere else because of this tax. It is just putting a, a burden on trying to expand our businesses and we want it repelled. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Next is Steve Haller from Minuteman Press. Oops. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Campanin for standing on the side of the small businessmen here and, and coming here today and, and helping us uh, view our opinions here. I think uh, uh, Albany has got to wake up. Albany has got to just stop this taxing and spending. Uh, like Jim said, uh, our businesses are really hurting here in Nassau County and, and, and around the, the, uh, the area. Um, we, uh, and, and this MTA tax is totally ridiculous. Uh, to get paid automatically, right off the top, before I even pay my employees. It's, it's, it's really got to stop. I want to thank him, uh, Kemp again for uh, this press conference today. Thank you, Steve. Senator Hannon. <laughs> Um, before I take questions, I just want to say it's pretty obvious how burdensome this has become, how the uncertainty of this economic climate is just made worse by the fact the state of New York has not been uh, trying to create jobs, has done everything they can to cut them off. If you take a look at any of the controller's reports, who to controller Tom DiNapoli just issued, a summary of the 17 audits that he's done in the MTA. He's pointed out all of the things on a very substantial policy basis that need changes. We're here having this press conference today because we need to inject policy into the political debate uh, that's going on. Yes, there's an election for governor, statewide offices, assembly and senate, but what we need to do is have discussion about policy not just politics, and that's what we've tried to do. Any questions? What is the, uh, what is the correlation between the 
translation, I mean, I, just for a simple audience to understand in simple English, what is the correlation? Why are businesses paying taxes to the MTA? That's a great point. The question is, why are businesses paying taxes to the MTA? It was one way of imposing a hidden tax that people wouldn't see. It's not like a sales tax on your sales slip. It's not like an income tax that you see in your payroll stub. It's a tax you never see. And it just gets imposed that way. It's, it's one of the most egregious taxes. And in fact, it probably supplants the commuter tax that people could see because that was on their income tax return. And the, it was a devious tax. It's one that is it's anti-competitive, anti-jobs. It's going to deter people from starting businesses. And that's, that was all done with great intent. And that's the problem. What, but again, between the business and the MTA, what's the correlation? And, and is this across Nassau County? I mean, it's across the 12 county region they call the MTA region. And there's not necessarily any correlation except the gra grand thought that you need mass transit uh, in, in a region. The difficulty is it's very hard to tell uh, a Steve Haller running a printing press in Levittown or a construction firm in Levittown why you need a subway in Lower Manhattan. Senator, uh, what, what kind of policy do you think can uh, help fix the MTA's walls? I know you're, gonna need, you're gonna need a multiple set of applications to this. You're gonna have to look at the efficiency of the operation, the cost of the operation. There is layers upon layers of old historic uh, uh, job rules, or overtime, uh, extra pay, vacation rules, they can't be done overnight, but there has not been any sense of direction to this. Uh, when they passed the MTA payroll tax, they said, we're very transparent. You can go online and look at all of our budgets. Well, I did. They were the most opaque, mysterious budgets I've ever seen. Only one thing that was sure, they were moving money from one account to the next. It really looked very suspicious. So you need to look at every part of this operation and you gotta get it in handle. The total amount of fare increases, fare, fare increases which were supposed to be avoided by this tax, the total amount of fare increases, Controller DiNapoli points out, since 2003 have gone up 40%. I mean, people can't afford it anymore. We're gonna have ghost trains that this whole thing is gonna support. I have a question. Uh, Senator, do you have any response to the MTA, do you have some ideas, suggestions, other ways to, to get around this? We'll take the controller DiNapoli's summary of his audits, take a look at all of the work rules that are there, take a look at the mismanagement, take a look at the high administrative costs that they have. Uh, Mr. Schoolman pointed out just the absolute incredible uh, cost increase that took place when they built their headquarters, going from about one and a half million to eight hundred and fifty million. Eight times? I mean, what type of planning is that? If you're supposed to be professional and dedicated to a single service, they've certainly botched that. More importantly, have they been forthcoming with information? No, they have not. Senator they, Hannon, can I add something? Um, let's just finish this and then we'll continue on. Michael? I had a question actually about registration for the DMV. Like, uh, those fees went up? Is that correlated? No, with the, the, the registration, there was one part of that went to the MTA, but most of that went to the general fund. That's part of the overall tax policy. We had in, the, in both 2009 and 2010 the least amount of public debate on a budget that we've ever had. For all that they were supposed to make it more transparent, it went in reverse. So all of the, the motor vehicle fees, the new plates, uh, the fresh, the, the saltwater fishing license, and 120 other taxes, no debates. And people said, where'd they come from? It was a lack of transparency. All right, thank you very much. Okay, I last question. With, with the MTA, uh, was when, when this tax was originally proposed, what were the promises made for this tax? I mean, if you're being taxed, then you have to show something to the public for that tax, right? Well, the promise was they'd have administrative reform, that they would keep the services, and they would keep the fares down. In contrast to that, we've had no reform. The fares are going up. They had the hearings last week, and uh, the... Uh, uh, services are being cut. They've cut out Port Washington and West Hempstead uh, services, and including the uh, West East End. Doesn't that uh, amount to tax without representation? It, the whole thing is tax without representation. It needs to be really revised. Thank you.